So we are in session 11 today. Uh, we'll be getting into uh, C sharp .NET modifiers. We'll, we did see the access modifiers in the previous session. Uh, in this session, we will see the other modifiers and uh, the list of the modifiers are abstract class. An abstract is a modifier again and we'll see what is an abstract class is all about and what are abstract methods taking an abstract itself as a modifier we have abstract methods and let's see what are they and abstract properties interface is another modifier and abstract versus interface and the constant as another modifier in csharp.net and uh, we'll see all of these in detail and many more uh, subtopics uh, going forward okay so let's uh, get into the session 11 so uh, the abstract class so we have already seen what is an abstract class right so the automobile as an example we have seen as an abstract class which can be created as an abstract layer in your program and the abstract classes can be can only be used as a base class for other classes because you cannot create inst uh, instance of the abstract classes and we did discuss about when we talked about the object oriented programming so um, so this in, this keyword uh, is a modifier okay so we have seen the access modifiers access modifiers are different from the modifiers all these keywords on the left hand side if you see all these keywords are uh, types of uh, modifiers and access modifier when you say they are they're going to control the access of the members uh, but the modifiers are, have a separate meaning to it when uh, you uh, decorate the respective members with these keywords uh, then their behavior will be completely different and we will see one by one most of them we have already seen um, uh, so access modifier, uh, there are five access modifiers and these are the additional modifiers that are available. Okay, um, so the abstract keyword, when you say, when you decorate a class with an abstract keyword, so it cannot be instantiated. This means this will have uh, a concrete or, or an abstract members within it. So which can be used as a base class. So it can be, it can be only used as a base class. So remember to become to be a base class it is not mandatory to be uh, to, de to declare with an abstract class okay so if you have a normal class that also can become a base class but uh, when you de decorate that with abstract class then it can only be a base class nothing more than that okay uh, that means uh, when you uh, de decorate that with an abstract keyword you cannot create instance of that class and use it okay conceptually automobile is a good example we have here uh, in other words you can also say animal as a good example because animal falls under the higher sub higher category it's uh, it sits on the higher category because it uh, is a conceptual uh, word not a real time word uh, if you see cat a cat is a a real time uh, a real time word which can exist on its own as a, a cat as a animal but animal, there is nothing uh, uh, in the world that is uh, animal, right? So a cat is more specific and animal is very generic. So whatever you see a generic or a high level classified one will become as an abstract class. When you design um, a, a object oriented programming, uh, when you design the domain object model, at that time uh, these uh, concepts will play a big role. Um, okay, so probably the good practice would be to, you know, uh, uh, read through the requirements and then identifying the uh, the different nouns from our, from the text and then uh, uh, coming coming back to the object oriented programming principles and applying them uh, to create a domain object model. That's the whole uh, object oriented thought process you need to apply uh, when you really uh, design a program. Uh, so right now we don't worry about that. Uh, right now the groundwork is to familiarize yourself with all these concepts uh, from probably after the .NET session. So uh, when I'm going to take the advanced .NET program, that time uh, uh, I will cover uh, that aspect also. Uh, once you get into a job, how will you be um, 
uh, handling the job requirements. So the bottom line business analyst will give you a bunch of documents to walk through and um, um, it's going to be pretty much a text of a business scenario so the people will be talking. Uh, so once you go through the text you have to extract the information and uh, design a domain object model and then build the application on top of it. So it's the um, whole paradigm of how your requirements phase uh, transform into a technical uh, design document. So we, I will be covering that aspect as well in the advanced .in program. So before that we should be familiarized with these keywords. Okay, so abstract classes have the following features. Number one, um, an abstract class cannot be, cannot be instantiated. An abstract class may contain abstract methods and properties. If you uh, see the may is a uh, is a strong keyword there. Uh, I should have bolded and underlined. So that means it may contain it may contain abstract methods and properties. When I say abstract, so it's a concept. Okay, when I say abstract, it's a concept. It doesn't have any specific meaning, right? It's just a name or it's just a placeholder. So that means when I declare any abstract methods, they won't have a body. That means they will never have a body and what implementation goes within it, you will not specify. It will be just a signature, a dummy signature with the parameters and that's it, nothing else. So what this is going to do, uh, what this method is going to do, or what this property is going to do, that is going to be defined by the one who is going to derive and implement it. Okay, so that's the abstract means. So in general, we can see an abstract means is just a concept. Uh, it doesn't have any meaning. It's just a placeholder uh, and the meaning will be different based on who perceive it or who inherit and implement it. Okay? So it is not possible to modify an abstract class uh, with this sealed modifier. We haven't seen a sealed modifier. It is down the line here. So, so when you say sealed, uh, you actually, we, we're going to see that today. So when you, uh, the sealed is another modifier. When you specify a class as sealed, that means it is sealed. That means you cannot uh, inherit from that class. So it is quite opposite to abstract. So abstract means this can be only be a base class. That means you are actually making this as a root class for the inheritance hierarchy. Okay, so when he says sealed means you cannot inherit. You cannot inherit from a, this class. So you cannot have a class declared as an abstract and sealed. It cannot happen because both are contradicting to each other. Hope that is clear now. So which means that the class cannot be inherited. Okay, a non-abstract class derived from a uh, uh, from an abstract class must include actual implementation of all inherited abstract members as a saying when I have an abstract members then um, that means they will be just a name we will see a demo probably that time you will have a, a clear idea yeah so, so I'm here um, so we're going to talk about the abstract so I'm taking the same old example of uh, automobile and uh, and within this uh, have properties okay let me collapse first so first of all, let's make a distinction between a concrete and abstract. So concrete we have already seen, which will have a uh, name, signature, and the body. Okay, so that is uh, uh, that will become as a uh, concrete members. In this case, I have a concrete property. Uh, this case, I have a model as a property, and it has a implementation of get and set. So the get, get is doing written and set is doing some written. And uh, this is not an abstract member because the abstract keyword itself is not there. Okay, in C sharp, uh, there, there is a short form of writing uh, uh, properties. In this case, I was actually uh, having a local variable as a model and returning that value. So it's pretty much encapsulation, right? It's, this is doing an encapsulation wherein I have a private member exposed as a public, uh, using a public property. But I can also have without uh, any of my local members. So if I'm not doing a specific implementation, which is it's pretty much like returning the value and uh, saving the value. So in that case, I'm not actually actually controlling the setter or doing anything with the getters. So in that case, I can straight away even do this. 
So this is also a concrete member, okay? Uh, a concrete member, uh, but this is a short form of a property declaration, okay? If you see in Visual Studio, um, if I say prop, P-R-O-P, there is a um, code snippets that are available. If you see the list of uh, the code snippets, and you have a prop and a prop full, okay? Uh, if I have to really create a property, I'll say prop and hit tab twice, and I get the property created. This is uh, uh, the body, the skeleton is created, and I can just re rename this uh, return type and the name, and I'm good, okay? This is the way I can um, create. These are the code snippets that are available. And uh, similarly, I can go and pick the prop full. When I say prop full, what it's going to do is, it's going to create a private member, and it's going to have the implementation to return the private member, and also assign the value, which is pretty much a model that I have here. So it is, a, uh, so both are concrete members. Okay, so only difference is that I'm not having a local uh, uh, member and exposing that using it. Uh, otherwise, implicitly, uh, compiler is going to create a local member uh, when you do a short, short form of property declaration. Okay, so it, this will still have a local member, but this is not visible in the code, but uh, internally it's going to create it at the runtime. Okay, that's what it means. The compiler will handle that. Okay, so uh, what I'm trying to say here is both of these are concrete members. That means it has still has a getter and setter, and in this case, get has a return and a set has a value assignment. Okay, so concrete members will have implementation. So what is an abstract member. So we are spe specifically looking at the properties. So this property is not a concrete member. Why? Because the abstract keyword or the modifier is uh, assigned to this declaration. So this makes this uh, property uh, be only the name but doesn't have any implementation of it. Okay, so abstract members, uh, you cannot use them directly. You have to implement them in the derived classes. So we'll see how this is getting uh, implemented, okay? And that's about the property. Uh, and also, we have the methods also. So, uh, so to make it clear, uh, we were actually uh, to walk with the slide. Uh, we are at only the abstract class. So the example here is also actually trying to show the abstract class. So we'll see only the class level part, okay? Um, so when I have an abstract class, we have been saying that you cannot create instance of it. We'll try that out, okay? So this is a code for abstract demo. Okay, so here, um, we're actually trying to create a car instance. So in this case, I'll just uh, comment this out for now. What I'm going to do is I'm, I will try to create an instance of automobile, right? Um, what I'm going to say is uh, automobile A is equal to new automobile. And pass it. So will this be a valid statement? So immediately the compile time error comes in. Uh, cannot create instance of the abstract class or interface. Okay, so we are clear with the keyword saying the abstract numbers cannot be created. Okay, so what will happen if I remove, okay, if I remove this then uh, some, most of the other part of the code might fail, uh, but since I commented it, probably it should be good. Um, so most of the other part of the code is breaking because uh, normal class, uh, because if I remove the abstract keyword, you cannot have um, abstract members in a non-abstract class. So if you see the error is very, pretty much clear. So it says automobile.honk is abstract, but it is contained in non-abstract class. Okay, so the exception, uh, it says that the honk is uh, um, is an abstract because I uh, declared that with the abstract modifier, but it is contained in a non-abstract class. So a non-abstract class cannot have abstract members. So only abstract class can have the abstract members, okay? Hope that is clear. 
Okay, so this is the thing. We cannot have abstract members here. So I'm going to roll back saying uh, you have abstract class and okay still we have this error because I'm trying to create instance of this so you can actually try out all these uh, things okay so once you get this code downloaded um, I would recommend you to try these uh, things and uh, look at the error message and the intention at this stage is to understand the what the error is all about okay uh, so if you understand the concept behind that then you will understand uh, what the error message is coming out uh, otherwise you down the line you might uh, not be in a stage to even understand what is trying to say and uh, how we're going to resolve that exception down the line when you do real programming uh, so the, at this stage you should uh, try to understand the concept and the error messages that are coming up okay so we are good there and uh, so that's the class level uh, uh, information that I would like to pass uh, and also um, this talks about the members uh, or the uh, non, a non abstract the last one a non abstract class derived from an abstract class must include actual implementation of all uh, inherited abstract methods so as I've been saying so abstract members are pretty much uh, uh, just a name a placeholder they doesn't have any definition of it so the definition is fulfilled by the one who is going to inherit it okay so in this case I have the uh, car okay let me go to the car definition let me compile this and make sure it's gone okay compile is good and uh, yeah so here if you see the car uh, is actually inheriting automobile okay and and then it is actually implementing the abstract properties which is the number of wheels in this case so number of wheels uh, in uh, automobile um, because in this case number of wheels is uh, an abstract property this must be implemented inside the derived class in this case which is car uh, and it should use the override keyword to implement the abstract property okay so what will happen if I don't do this so it is actually must and should operation so because um, just a name cannot hang out the implementation should be there and if you are not implementing it then you actually have to uh, write an empty block and throw an exception saying not implemented exception there is a separate type of exception for this so when I compile this, it's going to say so car does not implement inherited abstract member number of wheels get and set. You see, so it's mandatory that the derived class must implement all the abstract members. So it's not an optional. Okay. So the uh, the intention here is you must implement the uh, over uh, the abstract members using the over override, and we have seen what is an override uh, during our object oriented programming, right? So we uh, have to override the base class member with the implementation. So that's with the uh, and uh, if you for example, okay. So uh, I'm just trying to cover the Visual Studios. Uh, 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 ease of use okay I'm just trying to add a new class okay I just uh, I will make it as a truck okay let's make it as a we don't have truck now so I will add class truck okay truck I want to inherit from automobile okay so now what happens I compile it so straight away I have these many exceptions these many errors not exceptions sorry so it's saying uh, okay so um, truck does not uh, so the truck class does not implement inherited abstract member so it's all saying so it need to implement the inherited abstract member so all these are abstract members in 
or the mobile so that's why you have to implement them that's otherwise it's going to become a compile time error so how I'm going to implement okay so uh, Visual, uh, Visual Studio has a uh, intuitive way if you just uh, if you see the uh, let me take it close okay so if you see the uh, this small box we just have to um, click on that and you will have a window popped up and the uh, the window saying implement abstract class automobile so I just click there and it will give you the body to implement them so you just have to uh, so in this case uh, so by default it's going to say not implemented exception uh, otherwise you can write your own implementation if you're really making use of it so what will happen if someone calls this method uh, when uh, it is not implemented we'll see it's going to just simply throw an exception um, so in this case uh, I'm going to hide car so and I'm going to create truck TK is equal to new truck okay and uh, TK dot I'll say drive okay and I'll pass the instance uh, name which is TK okay now I'll have to compile and see so it's going to be a runtime error or a compile time error. It's a not a compile time error. It's pretty much good. So if I say go to definition, right click and go to definition. So I very well got this uh, member and it has a body. So this becomes a concrete member. So we are actually implementing the abstract member of automobile. And since it is a base class member, we are using a keyword called override. And the base class member doesn't have any implementation. It is simply an abstract. If I want to go to the uh, base class implementation, I'll, I'll simply go from here. Okay. And uh, another way to go through is uh, you have this uh, uh, intuitive way. You pick the class here and also pick the member here. So we're looking at the driver, drive. Where is the drive yep. drive is here so if you see this is an abstract member okay yeah those who are completely new to Visual Studio um, the first thing you should do is um, uh, make yourself familiar with the uh, Visual Studio environment uh, so once you get familiarized last time I walked through a couple of menus here on uh, but not all so just make yourself familiarize with how to open a solution, how to compile a solution, um, how to run a solution. So this, if you see, this is a uh, run uh, icon here, uh, start debugging, and uh, also debug. When you get into the debug window, you can also see, you can in this case, it's without debugging. So if you have any breakpoints and other things, when you choose Control F5, it will not stop there. So when I say uh, start debugging, then it's going to stop for wherever you have breakpoints and so on. So I start exploring uh, the Visual Studio ID first. Uh, that's the reason I covered that in the beginning, uh, so that you get familiarized with that. Otherwise, you will have trouble in uh, opening the solution and navigating um, through the ID options. So like the way I'm trying to show you. Okay, so that's how to, if you want to go to a specific code, you can, uh, there are multiple ways, uh, right click and go to definition is one, another one is in the code file itself, we can pick the respective uh, class and then pick the respective members and properties. So if you see the hand symbol, uh, this is this means this is a property and the block symbol with the blue one is a column method and uh, if you see the lock one, this is a constant. So we, we were going to see these topics uh, down the line. Okay, just explore, and you you will learn a lot of the new things, uh, uh, even um, that I have never explored. You might. Okay. Um, yeah, coming back to the truck. So yeah, we have seen uh, we have written this truck, but it is not a compile time error. But this is going to be a runtime error because I am actually throwing at runtime. 
right? Not implemented. So whoever tried to use it, um, the code will break at runtime. Okay, so um, so but uh, conceptually, you have to provide a concrete member for the abstract members. So that's what this last keyword was telling. A non-abstract class, uh, in this case truck, derived from an abstract class which is automobile, must include actual implementations of all inherited abstract methods and properties. Okay, um, abstracts uh, we are done. So this is at the class level and the abstract methods. When I go to the abstract methods we have already seen and here in this, case, in this example I'm giving a specific example for uh, an abstract class having a concrete members which means it has a block which which uh, has some text so it has a body within it and if you see the abstract methods they don't have the implementation if you see there is no curly bracelets right there is, oh, I'm sorry so there is there is no open closed curly bracelets that means it doesn't have a body it's just a name with a signature okay and how are you going to use this and what is the use of this we have already seen half part of it like um, when I declare an automobile uh, automobile is a high level abst uh, abstract layer which talks about the concept not the real time implementation because the concept can be different for uh, the respective members who were inherited from it so the uh, the openness that's how the extendability or uh, scalability comes into picture the, and more to scalability it's more to the extendability uh, so you can extend the uh, base class uh, implementation using these concepts and that's the reason object oriented program is a very very rich programming model and okay so what's there about the abstract methods an abstract method is implicitly a virtual method if you remember what is a virtual so I'll go and recap again here so if you remember uh, when we were talking about the object oriented programming in order to someone uh, imp override your base class members it must be declared as virtual if you remember if I don't declare it as a virtual then you cannot uh, override or in the derived classes okay since abstract members must be implemented in the derived class so they cannot be decorated with the virtual keyword you clear so if you understand that then you will understand this this first line so an abstract method is implicitly a virtual method so you don't have to specifically say uh, it is implicitly a virtual method so that the people can uh, whoever inherit uh, they have to implement it so you cannot make it as a, uh, a non-virtual method by implicitly it is okay okay what will happen if I do that okay that's what I'm trying to see okay honk is again an abstract and I will add a virtual keyword okay and I will compile so the compiler is smart it's not going to let it happen so it says honk cannot be marked virtual and why because the first I didn't uh, do show this here okay the abstract method so it says this is an abstract method a honk cannot be marked virtual okay because it's implicitly virtual and uh, you cannot mark it explicitly um, even uh, yeah in, in, the, in the other example we have seen that the class modifier itself implicitly is its internal uh, but you cannot actually make it as explicitly so it is implicitly virtual so that's the first statement okay an abstract method declarations are only permitted in abstract classes we did see this um, uh, in the previous uh, example so in this case what it means uh, you can have abstract members only within an abstract class okay so in this case uh, if I just simply take this abstract keyword since I have abstract members within this class it's not going to work 
because the compiler is going to crib. It says a drive is abstract, is abstract, but it is contained in a non-abstract class. So that means you cannot have abstract members in a non-abstract class. So to make it happen, I have to have abstract. Okay, so we are good now. So that's what it uh, means, the second statement. So because an abstract method declaration provides no actual implementation, there is no method body. So we have seen because, uh, in this case, there is no method body because they are abstract. The implementation is provided by an overriding method which is a member of a non-abstract class. Again, it should be a non-abstract class. Okay, um, so you, you can ask a question. So if uh, what will happen if an abstract class inherits another abstract class. Can that happen? We can see that. So the question uh, in my mind I have that, okay, can I have another abstract class inherit another abstract member? Let me see. So in this case I have a truck, right? Truck is an example. Can I make this an abstract? Okay, now that means uh, you can inherit an abstract member with uh, another abstract, abstract class from another abstract class. Okay, so there is no restriction there. Uh, in that case, what happens? So uh, we actually had an override members here. Um, so that's the beauty of an abstract class. Okay, when we see the interfaces, uh, that's where things will be blowing out. Uh, that's the big difference between an abstract and interface. Okay. Okay, this is good for now, uh, and I want to roll this back. And okay, the implementation is provided. That's over, and uh, it is an error to use the static or virtual modifiers in an abstract method declaration. Virtual we have already seen in the first statement, and uh, about static. Uh, static members we did cover. Static members have a very special uh, um, behavior wherein uh, static members are specific to the class, not specific to the instance. We did cover that in the previous uh, uh, sessions. Uh, we are going to see that again, but uh, not in that same detail that we discussed earlier. Uh, okay, so we are good with the abstract methods and uh, this is all about it. And properties, uh, abstract properties, we have seen this example wherein uh, we have the concrete member implementation here. Um, this is a concrete property wherein it has a body and in this case uh, uh, only the abstract keyword makes a difference. Otherwise, uh, if, if without the abstract keyword, this, li this line is still treated as a concrete member because of the short form of a property declaration. Okay, which we saw uh, get and set is still good. Uh, if you just have the abstract keyword, then that becomes an abstract property. Okay, so it is an error to use the abstract modifier on a static property. The static property we have seen, the static properties are not the instance members, they are specific to the class. That's why uh, you cannot have uh, abstract member to it. Uh, and uh, since because again abstract members, uh, why? Because abstract members need to be implemented uh, in a concrete class. Uh, when you when you go with the static members, you cannot do that because uh, static members uh, need to be uh, associated to the class, not to an instance. Uh, okay, I hope uh, you guys are clear with that. Uh, an abstract uh, uh, an abstract inherited property uh, can be overridden in a derived class by including the property declaration that uses the override modifier. We did see this, uh, yep, uh, yeah, we did see this uh, in one of the example wherein uh, we have uh, implemented the property number of wheels uh, using the override, okay? So this is the uh, implementation, implement the abstract property in a derived class. Okay, so the next one is a very, very important thing. So abstract versus interface. Um, if you have ever attended any interviews, questions so far, um, um, if you have not done it, that's fine. 
So if you uh, want to know how important uh, the abstract uh, class and interfaces, uh, I will say in simple words, 95% of the interviews will ask this question, must and should. Okay, this is again a very, very important question. Um, so um, we did see abstract what it is. Uh, uh, we want to read more material uh, online. It's good. Uh, good to read um, because this is very, very heart and soul of the um, .NET programming. Okay, so we did see what is an abstract. And now we'll see what is an interface. We are actually I have also seen an interface in the earlier example where an eye body shop is what an interface we added as an example. And, and today I'm going to show the same example with the differences between them. So the first difference here, uh, abstract classes uh, can have concrete methods. Okay, so if you see here the example below, so this is an abstract class and I was able to have a concrete property and also a concrete method. Concrete method saying it has a body. It has a body. And also it can have abstract property and also an abstract method down the line. Okay, it can have both. So this is an abstract method. So that's the beauty of abstract class. And now that's the difference between that uh, with interface is interfaces cannot have a concrete members. They can have only an abstract method and also an abstract property. And actually more to this, you can have uh, other members also. I'm just stressing here only with the properties and methods because we want to be familiarized with these two and we, so far we have seen them. Okay, and you, you declare with the interface. And key thing to remember here is uh, the interfaces uh, in .NET all have a naming convention. So the naming convention is, uh, it should start with letter capital I, which indicates interface. So uh, all the .NET uh, uh, interfaces that are available uh, will uh, follow the same naming convention. So that you can identify them by name rather than uh, at the core level. Um, and also whenever you create your own interfaces, then you should be declaring them with the same naming convention, which is starting with capital I and followed by the name. So in this case, I have body shop as an interface and I added a capital I in front of it. If you remember the, um, the, ga uh, sorry, the garbage collection, implementation and the last one of the tip was talking about the uh, disposable, uh, I disposable pattern. Uh, we avoid using the finalization block and use uh, I disposable pattern. So if you say I disposable pattern, I dispose, uh, I dispose is another interface which is provided in the .NET to uh, write your uh, cleanup logic in place of finalizers. Okay, which can be invoked explicitly by other programs or other uh, uh, runtime engines so whenever it is required. Okay, we'll see more of the I disposable pattern implementation uh, uh, probably. Um, we'll try now. Uh, let's see. Okay, so so that's a built-in interface. Uh, so the, in this case, we actually have a user-defined interface here. So we will see the user-defined interface today. And I will cover the I disposable pattern when I will talk about the um, exception handling. So that time it will be more appropriate to topic to discuss. Okay, so the first statement is um, that abstract classes can have concrete methods and concrete properties. In other words, concrete members, you should say. Uh, methods is very, generic, uh, very specific. Okay, interfaces cannot have concrete members. They can have only the abstract mem members. The next difference is the abstract classes is uh, designed to be a base class, okay? So abstract members can be, can only be a base class, nothing more than that, okay? They cannot be created instance of it and you cannot use uh, without uh, inheriting these classes. And whereas interfaces uh, is a contract, so interface uh, is a contract. In other words, an abstract uh, members itself they are contracts. If you see wherever you see the abstract member, they all stand for a contract um, and 
similarly interface is or uh, is uh, referred to as a contract it's it's not going to be base class to anyone but they have a contract uh, which people need to implement it whoever uh, whoever inherit them or whoever implement them they have whoever needs them they need to implement implement them so that's the uh, contractually if you see the real term picture when you apply to a contract you have to uh, follow that or uh, implement the rules and or follow the rules and regulations that you are uh, provided in the in the contract. So uh, programmatically it referred to as a contract again. Uh, that defines the signature of the functionality. So it just gives you the signature of the functionality but you have to provide the implementation. That's the uh, contract implementation. So these contract numbers are otherwise call, also called as an abstract members. Okay. And um, the third one, the uh, abstract class uh, classes fall under the inheritance. As, as we said, um, so the classes will fall under the inheritance hierarchy. Whereas the interfaces uh, will not fall under the inheritance hierarchy. Uh, saying that, so in the example, uh, if you say, uh, okay, here you have an interface called uh, is fixed, which is a property. I can uh, simply make it a short form to keep it simple so C sharp it is possible because uh, in VB.net uh, you cannot keep them in single line because the line new line character represents the uh, end of the line so C sharp uh, end of the line is determined using the semicolon okay end of the statement not the line sorry uh, so in this case uh, this interface has two members one is a property uh, is fixed another one is a paint it doesn't have any body so what I'm trying to do here is I am actually uh, implementing that interface in my abstract class I can also implement this uh, in any of the derived class okay so which is fine uh, so this is the uh, implementation block here so it's again um, follow the same thing what I'll do is I'm going to take this away okay so we'll use the Visual Studios um, um, intelligence okay so this says I should implement so uh, autobubble does not implement interface member which is uh, is fixed and paint so when I'm uh, making use of uh, what I'm when I'm inheriting the I body shop I should inherit so uh, immediately you get this helper then um, say implement interface body so uh, so it added the members and uh, surprisingly it added within my region that I have declared for it well wow, that's good oh sorry actually it created its or uh, it's a separate uh, region it didn't use my region but it created it a separate region which is very good um, I didn't know that it's going to create the region also which is cool so I can get rid of this region and uh, and compile this and this is good so I just had to provide the implementation for the get and set and similarly for the paint okay so now we are good so another thing in other context we were talking about uh, having uh, multiple inheritance uh, possible using interfaces but the last statement says um, interfaces do not fall under inheritance okay but we were saying that multiple inheritance is possible using interfaces so there is a overlap with that statement right so the the reason why it is like that is um, uh, if you see the inheritance hierarchies right let me go back to the class diagram okay so let me collapse this Okay, so this is the, uh, called the inheritance hierarchy. If you see, um, so this is a base class and this is a derived class, car, and you have another derived class, flying car, which is actually inherited from car, and car is inherited from automobile. So that means all of these members are actually in the inheritance hierarchy. Okay, whereas uh, we were talking about I body shop doesn't fall under the inheritance hierarchy. If you see the uh, the class diagram, it is uh, 
little smart enough to show you graphically also. It simply shows that uh, it is uh, uh, the automobile implements the uh, modifier. Uh, sorry, modifier is the project name. So I body shop. So it is implementing the interface. Okay, but it's not inheriting it. So and if I see the, what is that it says. So if you see the tooltip there. Oh, this will not help. Uh, hope you can see the tooltip down. Yeah. So car, uh, class car inherits class automobile. So the keyword is very specific even in the class diagram. The reason is, um, so this inheritance hierarchy means that they share the commonalities across uh, uh, the uh, the hierarchy that goes in. Whereas uh, this represents the real-time uh, business entities. Whereas when it comes to interfaces, uh, they don't fall um, uh, under the inheritance because this interface can actually span across multiple uh, classes. So anyone can come and implement this. So you, you don't have a business-specific uh, uh, domain restrictions. Uh, if, in simple example, if I add a, um, if I add another class, say, add class, say person, okay, a simple example, or I would I should have uh, named it as a driver, for example, okay, let to be specific, okay, driver. Let me go back to the class, okay. So driver, if I say where is my toolbox? Okay, so if I say driver to automobile, what will happen? Technically, it is correct. You can because uh, technically, oops. yeah. So technically, it is correct because it is just an abstract class, and driver is you know another class. So class can definitely inherit an abstract class. There's no issue with that. But does it make a business? sense no right so it doesn't make any business sense uh, if you map this to a real-time entity so can a driver have a number of wheels can uh, uh, okay a driver can drive but in this case I just have a method name mismatch there uh, and can a driver uh, honk it's it's a different uh, context we are talking about. Uh, you know, you can hit the horn. Uh, that means you can honk it. Uh, but you know, in real sense, uh, a driver uh, possess no characteristics of an automobile. So that doesn't fall under the business context. So, but a driver can also uh, implement this interface. Okay. So I body shop. Uh, in this case also, um, if you see, I body shop doesn't make any sense uh, for a driver object. So business-wise, it doesn't make any sense to to be in the inheritance hierarchy with this respective member. But uh, objects spanned across the uh, uh, spanned uh, uh, across the inheritance hierarchy or outside the inheritance hierarchy can also go and implement the uh, your interface. Uh, in the, the typical example in the, uh, in the real world example is the I disposable. If you say I disposable, the purpose of I disposable is to dispose uh, uh, the memory allocation or any unused uh, uh, external references. So I disposable is a common thing that can span across any object. So it doesn't have any specific business domain context. So uh, in this case, I'm picking a wrong uh, example. So um, if you make this as a I disposable or or uh, or uh, or a cleanup or write a log. Uh, if you remember the cross-cutting concerns that we were talking about, yeah, those can span across classes, uh, and the classes can be uh, within the inheritance hierarchy or not in the in inheritance hierarchy. But the interfaces can um, make a big use usage uh, usage-wise. Uh, they can uh, provide you the functionality that uh, that is not specific to inheritance hierarchy. So, so that's the reason. Uh, so you can still achieve the uh, multiple inheritance because uh, you can uh, one class can actually inherit multiple interfaces, but not classes. So in this case, uh, I will 
have a copy of this and paste this here um, okay and I change the name of this I will say I I what else uh, I say cup something okay it doesn't uh, so I cup driver I body shop and uh, I cup where is I cup okay so I can do a multiple inheritance surprisingly it's not asking to implement them why it should actually break because I'm not implementing any of the uh, I body shop or I cup probably oh I'm sorry there is I body shop oh this is an automobile okay so that's the reason so the reason is um, uh, since the uh, automobile already has the implementation of I body shop it does it does not uh, it's not asking for the driver also to implement it because iBody shop members are all already implemented by the base class member. So that's why it's not scripting and it's scripting for iCup because it's not uh, implemented here. Okay, so we are good. Um, so I was trying to get the answer why it's not scripting here and um, so we found the reason why. Okay, so we are good with the uh, abstract versus interface. The major difference between them is that the abstract members can have uh, concrete members and also abstract members, whereas interfaces can have only abstract members. And they must be all the abstract members, irrespective of whether they are in uh, abstract class or interface, they must be implemented by the uh, members who are going to inherit and implement them. Okay. And uh, the next miscellaneous topic is the constant. So constant is pretty straightforward. I uh, uh, hope uh, every one of you uh, have come across the constant. Um, okay, so we'll still cover them. Uh, constants, uh, constant versus variable is one good, uh, good topic, actually. So it's pretty simple, actually. If you see, uh, we have a constant clear, created, actually, in the, inside the class. So under this, so this is a constant. A constant cannot be uh, modified, so that means it is constant, okay? And it is declared using a uh, const cynst keyword in C sharp, and uh, I think the same keyword goes in the uh, C sharp uh, VB dot and also. Uh, and uh, normally, the naming convention for constant variables, uh, sorry, constant uh, name, uh, the identifier will have the all caps and separated by the uh, underscore. This is the naming convention that is followed generally in the programming. Okay, so that's the naming convention for constants. The constants can be initialized when they are declared. Okay, so in this case I have a car uh, class name, uh, car, and um, I have uh, initial, uh, sorry, sorry, class name uh, initialized to car, and I'm just using uh, the car. So what will happen if I say class name is equal to something here? So will that be a compile time error? Yes, it is a compile time error. So the left hand side of the assignment must be a variable property or indexer. Okay, indexes we haven't seen so far, but fine, we will cover that. So it's, uh, you cannot actually modify a constant value so it can be create declared and assigned at the initial uh, when the declaration phase itself okay so that's a pretty straightforward one so in session 11 we did cover a lot of other um, modifiers in dot net uh, to start with what's an abstract uh, and a, a quick uh, a deep dive into what is an ex abstract class is all about we did see in the earlier uh, session as uh, as well and then we be dotted what is a must inherit uh, in keyword or the modifier in general and we did also see an abstract method abstract properties uh, abstract versus interfaces so is a very very important question to understand and we did see a very good demo and we did see uh, what is the constants uh, in general, so how that can be used uh, in the programming. 
uh, and uh, we'll continue with the rest of the uh, topics such as the events and delegates in the next session.